عليكم جميعا عليكم السلام الله وبركاته استاذ آه ان آه طبعا احنا نشكر آه آه الدكتور الاشرف كان المعتاد آه على آه انا مش عارف هي ما ظهرتش دي ثانيه واحده على المجهود العظيم اللي انا مش عارف الشير سكرين ثانية واحدة اه انا بغلط افتح الباور انا بعمل غلطه انا بغلط <تصفيق> انا برجع تاني لل اي يس تمام ايوه تمام كده يس سر يعني نشكر الدكتور الاشهب ونشكر التيم بتاع بنها الحقيقه دايما بيبهرنا بالمجهود العظيم اللي بيعملوه وان شاء الله وي شيفت تو ذا انجلش لانجويج بيكوز اي انديرستاند ذات وي هاف ا جريت ديل اوف اوف سيرجنز فروم ابرود ماي توك از فيري كونسايز اند سيمبل and might be of interest because of the uh, uh, not common uh, presentation of such a case. Uh, I'm talking about Margellum's ulcer in uh, a neuropathic uh, foot uh, uh, affected by leprosy, the prometheus leprosy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the case report with uh, some short review, which is going to uh, remind us all uh, about this uh, Uh, not very common presentation. Uh, we have two uh, learning points. Uh, the message is simple. The first uh, uh, point is uh, that although uh, not commonly seen, we have always to remember that uh, lepromatous leprosy is one cause of neuropathic food. It's a cause of neuropathic <laughs> everything nearly, but uh, it is one cause of neuropathic food. Uh, the second point is that uh, a neuropathic foot, when it produces an ulcer due to any uh, pathology, may show malignant transformation over years. This malignant transformation, when it becomes uh, a squamous cell carcinoma, which is the most common, is uh, referred to as uh, margellans ulcer. Uh, our case. Uh, is uh, a 62 years old lady, uh, known leprotic, was not treated uh, in uh, a leprotic uh, 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 colony as uh, the usual in Egypt. She was treated at home. Uh, she presented with bilateral foot uh, uh, problems. Uh, the uh, right foot had uh, a big ulcer. Uh, the left foot had a smaller ulcer in the sole. Both ulcers were in the forefoot. Uh, here we can see uh, 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 the skin with the characteristic uh, papillo, uh, papillomacular rash, which is an aesthetic. Every uh, patch of these small uh, areas is uh, an aesthetic. And we can see the deformed uh, toes in both feet. Uh, she had no inguinal lymph nodes, and uh, she had Uh, negative three uh, successive smears uh, for the mycobacterium uh, lip. This is very important yeah, in order to so have active disease or not. Uh, patients with negative three successive smears with one week interval are uh, negative. They are not infected. This is the appearance of the uh, uh, feet of the patient. As we see on the left side, The sole ulcer is dry, uh, and uh, uh, actually it managed well later on 
by uh, uh, modified weight bearing uh, and dressing uh, and local treatment, uh, the cam walker solved the problem on the right side. Uh, the left side was a little bit more problematic. It doesn't look really nice. We notice a big ulcer, <laughs> but we notice that she still have five toes. Uh, the patient consented for uh, medical photography. Uh, uh, I find it uh, a good chance to remind uh, the audience with the characteristic faces of uh, uh, leprosy, which is uh, usually referred to as lionine faces, and to another uh, uh, sign, which is also characteristic of uh, leprosy, uh, which is the disappearance of the outer half of the eyebrows. This is the first sign that appears in the face. After that, the uh, eyebrow disappears, the hair of the eyebrows disappears totally. Uh, this is the X-ray of the patient at the presentation. Uh, we could see that the affection uh, uh, by the neuropathy of uh, leprosy is rather distant. It's not in the midfoot. Uh, it's not in uh, the uh, tarsal metatarsal area. It's more uh, distal. It is characterized by this appearance of uh, bone. It, it is characterized by thinning uh, of bone uh, with little bone reaction. Uh, the conservative treatment on the right side failed. And the patient was uh, advised to come in for surgery. She refused, but she came back again after five months with this appearance. Notice that the big toe has gone. She doesn't have a big toe. Now she has four toes. And the ulcer has grown in tissue. The tissue is uh, protruding outside of the ulcer. The edge of the ulcer is averted in certain areas. She had become uh, anemic because she has daily bleeding. Still, she had no inguinal lymph node. And we repeated the sneers, and she is still not infected. This is the lateral uh, appearance of the uh, foot. <coughs> uh, this is the X-ray of the foot. Uh, as you could see, uh, the uh, uh, left side, the toe, the big toe has disappeared, but she still had other metatarsals. And after five months, uh, she doesn't have bone actually for all the metatarsals except, except a little bit on the fifth metatarsal. Again, this is the comparison between presentation and the after five months. Uh, uh, a biopsy was taken from the patient and it proved to be uh, a squamous cell carcinoma, a marginal, uh, marginal ulcer. Uh, she agreed on a sign amputation. This is uh, a diagram for the skin flaps of the sign amputation, which is actually uh, the most important uh, or one of the most important uh, uh, steps in this uh, operation so that uh, to avoid uh, skin flap necrosis. This is after the closure. And uh, this is after the closure with the X-ray. Sign amputation is a TBU tailor uh, this articulation associated with excision of the protrusions of the lateral malleoli. It depends on uh, weight bearing on the heel pad, i.e. you must have a good heel with heel pad. And uh, prefer uh, preferably uh, a patient uh, was, was, uh, will, would be uh, of a normal stage. Uh, heavyweight patients and obese patients uh, are actually not very good for this procedure because uh, uh, heel pad atrophy occurs. Uh, this is the uh, uh, image of uh, microscopy showing uh, a profound infiltration with the moderate anaplastic squamous cells. Uh, she is actually a grade two squamous cell carcinoma, uh, characteristic by cell nesting, as we could see clearly in this image. Uh, this is uh, a microscopic image of the uh, 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 resection margin. Uh, this was a thigh amputation. 
uh, the section margin is far away from uh, the lesion, but it is uh, one of the criteria that you should uh, always uh, take uh, to see your resection margin if you are doing wide local excision. This is another uh, 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 microscopic picture of the resection margin. Now we are going to go to a quick dis discussion. This is uh, uh, Jean Nicolas Marjolaine, the French surgeon, uh, who described malignant degeneration of the chronic skin lesions in 1828, uh, nearly 100 years ago. Most of them were uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, a small percentage, about 5%, were basal cell carcinoma. In recent days, the WHO classification puts the microscopic picture of uh, squamous cell carcinoma uh, at three levels. Grade one is the well differentiated, grade two moderately differentiated, and grade three poorly differentiated. Uh, it uh, it is actually an untreated skin carcinoma will cause death by distant metastasis. It's a slow killer. Uh, this uh, appeared earlier in chronic sinuses and in ulcers compared to scars. We know that the neuropathic foot can sometimes present with uh, problematic scars or problematic chronic scars, or by ulcers or by sinuses. The sinus and the ulcer group shows more uh, of a transformation to margarine ulcer as compared to the scar group. Uh, metastatic disease from margarine ulcer uh, of the squamous cell carcinoma type uh, varies in the incidence. Uh, it is between 10 and 35%. When we compare that to squamous cell carcinoma arising from naive skin, i.e. previously normal skin without previous uh, chronic ulcers, uh, the, 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 the incidence is between 1 and 10 percent. Uh, management of uh, uh, marginal ulcer is straightforward. Uh, the best treatment is wide local excision. Remember that in our case, we have a peripheral uh, condition, uh, distant foot, uh, but you can have marginal ulcer in any sinus or any area of the body. So wide local excision with one centimeter margin is enough as a standard surgical treatment for marginal uh, ulcer. Uh, amputation is indicated when bones, joints, are involved, if you like in our case, the bones and the joints are involved of the forefoot. Or in cases when wide local excision is not possible. Uh, the, the, the operation is indicated, uh, especially when you have ongoing infection, when you have ongoing bleeding, like in our case, because the bleeding uh, will never stop without surgery. Uh, it's a parenchymatous bleeding. Uh, when you have ischemia or when you have uh, 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 local lymph nodes appearing. The question of local lymph node dissection and the excision is controversial. Some authors would uh, recommend uh, 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 doing this as a must if you have uh, uh, local inguinal lymph nodes to dissect it and remove it. And some authors would say it will not change the outcome. Uh, uh, oncologically, from the oncological point of view, uh, amputation is not better than wide local uh, excision if you have the, 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 the liberty to do uh, uh, any of the procedures in uh, the same patient. Uh, what happens if the patient is not uh, uh, smear negative, as in our case? If in the leprotic cases with positive smear test, uh, and uh, you, you reach the negative status by three successive tests, one week between each, not by one, not, not by one test. Uh, the, the antibiotic, uh, anti-leprotic treatment here is a triple therapy uh, composed of Dapson, Rifampicin, and Clofazumine uh, for at least six months, together with the surgery, of course. The outcome is not bad and it is not brilliant. 
uh, 98% of all recurrences were seen within the first three years, i.e. it appears early. Uh, incidence of recurrence is about 40%. Uh, it is less in uh, young age, it is higher in older age. Uh, most of the recurrence is regional, i.e. Uh, the area of the ulcer would be ulcerate again. Uh, but distant metastasis in the brain, liver, lung, kidney, uh, and the distant lymph nodes have been reported as well. Uh, the long outcome is as follows. Five years survival rate uh, after wide local excision is 60%. Uh, after amputation, uh, it is about 70%. Uh, if regional lymph nodes are reported, the three year survival rate drops to 35%. لا لا لو سعادتك مش هتجي لها صوت وصوره خلاص هتتقال وسعادتك قاعد بس you would do uh, lymph node section or not. او خلاص يبقى مش هتجي لها صوت وصوره سعادتك هتكون موجود بالصوره يا فندم. What are the lessons learned uh, in this short presentation? Do not hesitate to take biopsy from the chronic lesions mentioned when you see excessive bleeding. When you see increase in the size or depth, when you see associated painless lymph node enlargement in the groin, and uh, when you see an inverted edge. Marginal ulcer is an uncommon killer. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor Taimur Hosseini, for this very interesting talk. Uh, we are not accustomed to hear Professor Taimur speaking about foot and ankle because he's an eminent star in hip arthroplasty, but it's quite obvious that Professor Taimur can speak uh, fluently in any subspeciality in orthopedics. He's an eminent star in any subspeciality. Thank you so much, sir. Now we thank, you, thank you, Dr. Taimur, uh, for this fruitful presentation. Uh, I have to one question and one of our audience have another one. Uh, my question is, the key, I think the key for management of the leprotic uh, problems is early diagnosis. The problem is most of the patient came uh, very late, as I imagine. Uh, can you agree with me on that? Uh, this is true. This, this patient ha have been uh, leprotic for 35 years. Uh, she uh, went to the asylum, to the uh, 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 leprosy colony in uh, Khanka, near in Cairo, and she lived there for five years, and she received the treatment. And uh, she was uh, smear negative, actually, for, uh, for about 30 years. Uh, and then she started to have uh, these uh, ulcers. Uh, it is uh, probable that people who are not under treatment uh, will have uh, higher uh, nerve uh, damage. Uh, that's to say people uh, who uh, contract leprosy and then are treated uh, will have a slower uh, uh, nerve damage uh, as compared to other uh, group uh, of leprotic patients who did not have uh, early treatment. Uh, the once the, 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 the nerves are affected, uh, clinically they say those with uh, rolling uh, ulnar nerves and the rolling common popliteal nerves, even if they, they are well treated, will have uh, some problems, uh, not necessarily uh, as, a, as a marginal ulcer, yani having marginal ulcer in a neprotic uh, uh, foot is not a common thing, but it is, uh, a reminder to all of us, as I said, in the uh, learning points. But the complications uh, of uh, uh, leprosy in the term of uh, uh, auto-amputation and the deformity of the foot and the fingers uh, will uh, uh, happen in this group of patients with uh, affected large nerves, i.e., as I, as I told you, you can identify it clinically, uh, by uh, rolling the ulnar nerve and the uh, common peroneal nerve in the four li in four limbs, uh, uh, although they do not need to have treatment with Daxon and they are smear negative and they are not infected, uh, they will have the neuropathic part of the problem. Thank you so much, sir. We have to go to the uh, second speaker. Please, uh, for the Dr. Taimur, 
ان ان منصورة ليبرتي مانج از اشاركو اور اشاركو از نيم ذا فيرست كيس فور شاركو از ديسكرايب ان ليبرتي از نيوروباثيك فود اند ذا بروبلم ذات سو فور فور مي اي اي ثينك اي تريتد ان سم Dr. Hani, Professor Hani? Uh, I didn't treat it on a uh, uh, plantar ulcer, but uh, the sh in leprosy, the treated with uh, in, in diabetic food ulcer, uh, uh, clinic in, in, in Mansoura as in the leprosy. And the, as the doctors may, uh, always follow the patients, and if, if any problems, they send to uh, our unit in, in Mansoura, and we can do uh, the operation, operation for them. And the result of leprosy, in generally, better more than the, uh, the charcoal, diabetic charcoal. Thank you, Dr. Taimou. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Mohamed Bail, Ashab, and the team in Benha. وبشكركم على اليوم العلمي الجميل ده جدا وربنا يخلي حضرتك وطبعا باكد بس مع دكتور تيمور بيه على التندون بالانسنج عشان تندو اكيلس دايما بيحصل اكواينس ربما انا شفت حضرتك معلم على مكان التندو اكيلس في الانسيجن بتاعك او في السكار ان احنا بنعمل زي بالانسنج مش كده يعني حضرتك ما قلتش عليها بس انا حبيت اقول للزملاء ان كتير قوي بيحصل اكواينس التندو اكيلس بيشد الستامب فدي تكنيكالي مهمه جدا دي ديتيلز في الساين ابلكيشن الساين ابلكيشن يتعمل ازاي ومزايا ايه و وعيوبه ايه هو اي عمليه ما هياش هم اللي كانوا انت عارف ما بتتعملش كتير يعني انما ان سيلكت بيشنس هي المشكله ان ساعات بيجي لي بيشنس عاملين الحاجات الساينز من غير ما يعملوا التندوم بالانس وبيحصل لهم اكواينس وبتبقى الحته الستامب بتاعت الكاكير بتبقى باصه لتحت فطبعا فدي يعني فرصه ان انا حضرتك بالظبط بالظبط هيحصل هيحصل مشكله في السكار آه. هيحصل مشكله في السكار وفايده ال... وفايده الساين ابلكيشن بقى هتختفي بالظبط يعني كده ما عرفتش تمشي على الهيل باد على الهيل باد بالظبط آه. كده ما تمشيش على الهيل باد زي ما هو كان في دماغه يعني بالظبط متشكر جدا لحضرتك دكتور طيب. ثانك يو بروفيسور احمد فليب ثانك يو سو ماتش سير ناو يو موف تو ذا سكند سبيكر Uh, Professor Hani Mwafi, uh, Mansoura University, and the eminent uh, shining star in the sky of foot and ankle surgery. Uh, Professor Hani, you are very welcome. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Asha. Thank you for your effort. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I'm already recorded by uh, uh, my Khaled? Tool. Yes, Khaled. <coughs> Khaled. Khaled. <laughs> Uh, Egyptian Orthopedic Association for the uh, monthly clinical meeting, but indeed, I would like to the man behind this meeting, which uh, uh, Professor Al Ashad is the head of the orthopedic department on Benha University. Uh, actually, uh, he did a good job for uh, I think since one year for virtual or uh, for many courses. Uh, he did for his uh, for his department, but uh, not only for his department, but also I think for uh, Egypt. Also, I would like to say not only Egypt, but also all over the world. So thank you, Professor Asha. Today I'm speaking about our, or I my case presentation about how to manage plantar of shark uh, uh, foot ulcer. But before uh, to present my case, actually, I'd like to I'd like uh, to say is uh, the Charcot arthropathy in uh, ulcer is vascular or mechanical? Actually, uh, many researchers said that the common mechanism of ulcer in Charcot foot is foot deformity and the neuropathy. So this is make uh, and uh, bring about skin breakdown in person with diabetes, as due to mechanical failure of the underlying insensitive neuropathic joint, leading to, leading to progressive pressure, necrosis, and also eventually ulceration. So 
by by analysis this words if there is disturbance the mechanics it means leading to deformity and this deformity uh, uh, the affection of this deformity is pressure necrosis and of course pressure ulcer but maybe leading to osteomyelitis or without osteomyelitis but the ulcer it is a pressure ulcer and uh, and foot uh, in our department and also in our, uh, in our unit, uh, we make uh, many research about the management of diabetic uh, ulcers or uh, Charcot ulcer uh, from orthopedic point of view. And also, we said that it's a mechanical correction of the foot and ankle is important for healing of the Charcot or diabetic foot ulcer or not. So I will present two cases. The first one is the forefoot ulcer, and the second is midfoot, and maybe extend to the hind foot. But before we were speaking about this ulcer, actually in our uh, foot and ankle unit, we have an, an uh, own calcification, which uh, this calcification, it will be uh, published in International Orthopedic Journal, and it, it will be available in uh, online in the next week. And this is uh, in charcoal arthropathy of the foot and ankle radiogra radiographic and clinical pattern with related outcomes. The classification is depends on it is an easy classification. It is two types. It is the uh, first type in any one region affection only and. The second type is that more one region affected. And each type are divided into four cases. It depends on the first is stable or unstable, uh, with deformity or without deformity. And the final one is uh, the, the end is the D, which is the deformity with or without ulcer, mechanical ulcer. So, an example for, for, for this case is this is an, a lady about 57 years old, has uh, diabetes and also the, uh, she underwent two uh, amputation of the uh, big toe and a little bit from uh, middle ray. And, and she came presented by this, this and also the X-ray. Eventually we analyzed the X-ray and also the patients, we found that there is a little bit uh, second tooth is dislocated, and also the first metatarsal angle it is little bit increasing, and the line of the joint between mid mid uh, mid cuneiform ma the, with the first metatarsal it is little bit is uh, oblique line, so. What we did, we did just an excision arthroblasty for the second toe, and also we did what is called a labidus operation here, um, with one, just one screw. And the presentation is the first, this is before operation, and after 24 days, the patient, the ulcer is completely healed, we didn't uh, use any curate or anything in this ulcer. Just we uh, we we do an betadine um, and just um, uh, that that only affected betadine only, and we covered with uh, uh, those and that's it. And the patient after 24 days, and after three months. Six months patient is, I think it is completely closed. And if we see the skin, it is, looks like a normal skin, which it is a benefit for the patient and also a benefit for the surgeon. And this is a patient after the same patient after five years. She was happy about this result and she was walk without any deformities, any problems for her. And so we consider this is a type one 
but type 1D from Mansura classification, which is type 1 for, for, uh, for, uh, for our results, which the over, uh, always get an, a good result. The second case is, is the, in midfoot, there is a problem, and there are many, many regions affected. So we said that this is a prenavicular affection. The prenavicular affection here, but if it's stable or not, we have to do an X-ray, a standing X-ray, and we show that there is a the pressure here. That this is the uh, ulcer, and this is pressure in this. So it is unstable. So it is type two. Actually, it is unstable, and also um, uh, it is with ulcer. So. We, we need to correct the mechanics of the foot, and we do an uh, uh, arthrodesis to the middle ray and arthrodesis to the lateral ray. And this is a patient after four days from the operation, it is a little bit is gradually increasing, and the cloid or the, everything is beginning to begin improve. And the patient after 10 days, and 20 days here, the ulcer become a little bit decreased in size. And after 28 days and 34 days. And the patient after two months here, and the ulcer has completely disappeared and a little bit is, is good. And this is an X-ray after one year. And, and this story after six months. And after two years, we found that the patient here, it looks good. But the X-ray is a little bit, there is a plantar flexion of the ankle joint. And a little bit, I think there is a tightness of the Achilles tendon. And mechanically, it is unstable. So after two years also, the patient came to us by ulcer here, as you see, and, pay, uh, and there is a union in many cases, but the patient has an ulcer. And we did revision by plates and screws, and we do a subtalar and also um, subtalar arthroidesis, middle ray arthroidesis, and later, later ray arthroidesis. And this is a patient after 18 months. I think it is going a little bit well, but actually in type 2D in Mansura classification, we always, you, you couldn't say that, okay, the, this, is a, this is a good solution or good results, but it is a little bit in uh, the results is uh, le, uh, less than the results or not good like uh, type 1. So we can conclude that analysis of food deformity biomechanically and correcting or improve the food mechanics is a cornerstone in treatment of diabetic foot ulcer in, all, in, in charcoal associated with bony deformity and always it is usually decrease the recurrence rate. If we know that the recurrence rate in normally is usually in about 25% in cases in type uh, uh, in charcoal foot ulcer in, in one year, and about 100% uh, in after four four years. Actually, here the uh, the patient for uh, is uh, returned the ulcer. It has a type two D is return ulcer or re recurrence the ulcer after four years, but in type 1D, and uh, in type 1D in case uh, of the, the first cases, I think the, the follow-up for five years, and the patient is walking normal, and also he, she become happy with his, um, his lifestyle uh, by this way. And finally, I would like to thank 
Professor Ashab and also the Egyptian Medical Association. Thank you so much, Professor Hani Mwafi. Thank you so much, our beloved professor, for this very interesting talk. Uh, if we have any questions to Professor Hani before we proceed to the uh, third speaker. Okay, now we, we will move to the uh, third speaker, which is a very eminent uh, foot and ankle professor and surgeon, uh, Professor Osama Shazli uh, in Shams University. Uh, professor Osama, you are very welcome and congratulations for the a very interesting uh, new book, Awraq Shamoun al Masri. It's very interesting book, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ashab. Uh, thank you, so much, thank you a lot. Uh, I'm really happy to be with the Egyptian Orthopedic Association as well with the Orthopedic Department of Banha University. Uh, it's always my pleasure. pleasure. Uh, also, I'm so happy to be with my uh, professors in Foot and Ankle Society, Dr. Hani Mwafi, Professor Atas Al Beltagi, and Professor Ahmed Khulif, and my colleague uh, Ahmed Rami. Uh, I will share uh, right now my screen. I'm happy that uh, Dr. Taimur Husseini, uh, my dear professor, also had presented a case of neuropathic foot, and Dr. Hani had presented a case of diabetic neuropathic foot. I will show a case earlier before having uh, neuropathic ulcers, uh, which is a midfoot charcoal case. I hope uh, you will like it. <clears throat> well, uh, I will just present this case uh, quickly. We have here a case of uh, 63 years old male uh, he is active businessman. He has uh, many factories and he goes uh, uh, for uh, watching and observing his job and work. He's diabetic for 22 years and he has insensible food. And he was complaining of recurrent painless swelling and edema over the two uh, weeks uh, before uh, he started to seek medical advice. I, I want here to say as a classic scenario, which we always see in our orthopedic uh, foot and ankle clinics, and I think this scenario is repeated also in different regions in the world, uh, that the patient, uh, diabetic patient with a swollen foot, first he consults the physician, internal medicine physician, and he goes to a diabetologist to consult him about his swelling. The first and initial diagnosis made by diabetologists in most of cases is the diagnosis of cellulitis. And they start to refer him into a general surgeon or to a vascular surgeon. And the vascular surgeon usually makes a duplex to check and to rule out presence of any vascular ischemia or problems. Then he starts to treatment by antibiotics and anti edema. And after they fail for a long time, they start to consult orthopedic surgeon. And I think this is repeated in our clinics and also in many other regions. This was the first X-ray made by the patient after one month of seeking medical advice. And as we see here, it's a case which may be similar to that shown by Dr. Hani Mwafi, but it's different as we see here, total dislocation present in the two part joint telonavicular joint and calcaneal pupoid joint without fractures. We cannot see here fracture in the naviculars, fractures in the pupoid, or even in the CT and MRI made by the patients, there were no fractures in this patient. So now what's the diagnosis of such case? Of course, the diagnosis of such case is a Charcot case, early case of Charcot arthropathy and midfoot Charcot arthropathy. And this is a message for uh, general practitioners and for internal medicine physicians and diabetologists. When they have a patient diabetic with uh, foot swelling and edema, he must to do x-ray to rule out presence of early Charcot like this case. I here just mention, just as a reminder, how to differentiate between infection or cellulitis and early Charcot case. And you can find this in different journals, but the most important is the clinical and the swollen erythematous digits present in infections like a sausage too, will not disappear when we elevate the foot of the patient. And this is a cardinal sign of differentiation between Charcot and infection is disappearance of erythema when you elevate the foot. Besides the laboratory investigations, of course, in case of infection is much higher. 
specifically the total leukocytic count is much higher than in case of Charco, and also the radiological findings which differentiate both of them. This is the assessment of our patient. This is the elevation test we made. Uh, the foot, when it is hanging, it's a swollen and the resemitous. When it's elevated, it, the sema disappears and it's much better. The patient has loss of proprioception as part of the problem, loss of touch and pain. And these are the laboratory investigations of the patient. CPC of the patient total count is normal. Acute phase reactants are slightly elevated. Blood sugar is uncontrolled with hemoglobin A1C 9.3 and renal function is 1.4. Okay. What's, is, uh, and I think Dr. Hani Jusas has shown the uh, some of the classifications of diabetic ulcers made by Mansura, and I congratulate him for this nice uh, new classification which we needed. But we have classifications for Charcot, not for ulcers, like uh, Iken holes, like different classifications. But in cases of uh, such type of injuries, I think it's not present in classification. If you are going to classify it with uh, Sanders fracture, it's super joint, but usually in super joint affection or Sanders type three, there is fragmentation and broken navicular and cupoid. The isolated dislocation is really unclassified. Uh, we don't have a classification for isolated dislocation in Charco case without fracture. This is why I show this case. Also, we have, uh, if we want to classify according to Ikem holes, a stage one because it's acute stage, but also it's stage one with, uh, with uh, uh, dislocation, not fragmentation or fracture in the bones. Uh, so uh, when I revised the literature, I found very scanty cases of midfoot charco dislocation without damage of the bone and the vicular. And uh, in literature, there is one of these papers mentioned that in literature only 15 cases, and this may be the 16th case of isolated dislocation. The timing of surgery here, uh, of course, you know from our practice and from previous uh, webinars that in Charcot, we do uh, in acute stage, nothing, just conservative treatment. I have to wait. Uh, for three months until the acute stage pass, and then we can manage in subacute stage. Now this patient is one month after presentation. I think it's different here. We may have some debate about the timing of surgery, when to do it, should I do it after improvement immediately of condition, after control of hemoglobin A1C, after return of the inflammatory markers, and each uh, decision if to do or not to do may have some pros and cons. For me, if you don't do such case and treat it, although it is in acute stage, we I may see this case end in a similar case like Dr. Hani's case with ulcer in the plantar aspect due to the pressure of the head of the telus. So I, I went to uh, the decision of early uh, fixation and fusion rather than waiting uh, to bypass the acute stage and uh, uh, I treated it uh, because treatment in this stage may be easier to reduce the tailor and epical joint. It will not be difficult for you. Also, it will avoid uh, impending ulcers and wound problems. And uh, in the cases shown in literature, I found that uh, these cases went, some of them, uh, sorry, some papers about acute dislocation in diabetic patients, they prefer to do fixation rather than to do uh, waiting and conservative treatment. Uh, here also, uh, we may have some uh, discussions about the approach. Should we use single approach, midline or double approach? I prefer also in this case to do double approach, one for the telonavicular joint. And look here at this approach where we can see this is the tailor body, it's not the tailor head, this is the navicular and the tailor head is in the plantar aspect down. Here is the calcaneic cupoid side, the lateral approach for subtalar and calcaneic cupoid. I like to use uh, this instrument, which is Hinterman uh, distractor, in order to help me in uh, visualization and preparation of the telonavicular joint. I put it and I spread with it, and I can easily see the joint, and I can remove the uh, tailor head particular surface, and as well as the particular part. 
Uh, and in the subtalar region also, I use it uh, when it is difficult to open to see the serial aspect, this minimized uh, the problem of traction and wound problems uh, markedly. Then we have to reduce, I have to, return, to re uh, make the telonavicular angle to normal, back to normal, also the calcaneal cupoid, and I make fixation preliminary with K wires, and then I make definitive fixation using plates and screws, and I put bone grafting uh, for uh, uh, in, uh, enhancing healing. Postoperatively, these patients, we put them in bulky dressing and back slab, uh, and we remove stitches at two weeks. Then we put a cast for the patient. The most important, the patient should be none with pairing for this uh, side for at least uh, three months. And after that, we can start. Uh, this is the follow up x ray of the patient, as you see, with good healing uh, in the subtalar joint as with the uh, telonavicular. And there is very good restoration of the telonavicular angle and calcinia pitch angle, which may be difficult if you try to treat this patient after three or four months. And here is also the uh, uh, AP view and oblique, uh, good healing. Also, the patient was so happy walking uh, simply like that. As yes, and here is uh, also the clinical uh, x-ray. The take home message here, remember that tuper joint uh, affection uh, maybe uh, represents rare cases. It's 10% of all types of charcoal. But if you have isolated this location without fracture, it's very rare. We have some case reports. Uh, isolated dislocation uh, may be treated differently from classic charcoal. We don't need here to wait until the acute phase bypass, but you can reduce it quickly and fix it with proper immobilization and also postponing wet pairing for a longer time. And this may uh, avoid having uh, problems of diabetic ulcers as we see in the previous lectures. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed Al Ashab and uh, Ban University and Egyptian Orthopedic Association. I'm so happy being with you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Professor Shama Shazli, for this very interesting talk. Uh, this is uh, as usual from you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, before we move to the uh, last speaker, uh, any questions to Professor Osama? Yes, Osama. Uh, good evening, Osama. Good evening. Uh, as usual, a very nice, uh, fruitful uh, discussion. Uh, I ask you, do you usually use bone graft in uh, cases of charcoal uh, management? And you recommend that? Yeah, yeah. I always use bone graft in fusion and especially in diabetic patients, because healing issues usually is delayed and we may have problems with healing. So I usually use bone grafts, especially with such extensive dislocation, you will need to put some support uh, with bone graft uh, with fixation. Autogenous iliac bone graft? Or yes, autogenous iliac bone graft, yes. Okay, okay. Um, I have a comment, please, Osama. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your cases. I will send to you my this my classification about uh, Sharko. Also, this includes like, this is one region. And I think the first step of, uh, of acute charcoal is dislocation, which is uh, okay, like less frank dislocation. I think you, you see that. But <clears throat> if it's, uh, there is displacement, not like, uh, uh, not like your cases in, in uh, less frank, sometimes you find that it is it can it is maybe stable. If it is stable, I leave it and uh, for one joint, that's okay. I have to be, I have weight until the acute stage is completely resolved. Actually, uh, uh, um, rapid reduction of, um, uh, of, um, of, the, of acute, of acute, acute case, yes. I think I'm, I'm, I'm doubt about that. I, I, I'm sorry about uh, it. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, I was scared from to, to interfere in this stage because the results, it's not, um, it's not good. Also, of course, as I said, 
pros and the cons. You have uh, things to do it early. Uh, you have uh, against, of course, but if you do it early. Yes. I but I, I prefer in such case, cases with locations that to do it early. Because if I wait, if I wait, it will be impossible to reduce. You, if you want to reduce, you have to cut the head of the talus and put big bone graft and to make realignment again. It would be very difficult, incomplete. I have, by the way, another case which was treated conservatively and I needed to do it, but I, uh, because of time, I didn't show it. Uh, I could never uh, achieve such nice reduction as seen in uh, early intervention. The only issue is the soft tissue condition uh, if it is permits to open, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, as for my opinion about um, uh, firstly, uh, uh, interfere in the acute stage, I'm a little bit uh, scared from this. And uh, also, if we wait, what is your aim from, from, from treatment of the shark food? You need an stable food. The first, if the first time to the patients, I think it is usually, as you as you know, it is usually will be repeated and another acute, uh, acute stage. So it is better to uh, to be calm until the, everything is okay, and then you can do graft. And also, I I have a many a many cases, and I think you know you know that without graft, um, I didn't use graft at, at all. For for uh, 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 for charco, whatever ankle, whatever meat food, whatever ev everything, because I'm I, I'm little bit also scared from infection for the from the, for the craft because okay I know that there is a good blood flow in in this area, but actually. I didn't use graft. I didn't use uh, even if, if there is shortening. I'm agree about that. And also, I, I is, uh, spoke with the patients about there is an um, an shortening in your limb, and you can move. Actually, I will send you my my uh, my papers. Uh, uh, today I will. Thank you so much, Professor Hani. We are out of time, sir. So we have to move to the uh, last speaker because we are out, out of the schedule. Uh, the last speaker will be uh, Dr. Ahmad Rami from Helwan University. Dr. Ahmad, would you please uh, start? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Ahmad Rami, lecturer of orthopedic surgery, Helwan University. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Dr. Mimad Hosni, the president of the Egyptian Orthopedic Association. Professor Dr. Abdus Salamayi, the General Secretary of the Egyptian Orthopedic Association, and Professor Hani Moifi, the Treasurer of the Egyptian Orthopedic Association. And I would like to express my great appreciation for Dr. Mohammed Gamal Al Ashab, the head of the Orthopedic Department, for uh, his kind invitation. I will start now sharing my screen for our uh, today case. It's a case of a typical tailor body fracture. Here we can see the plain X-ray for a male patient, 43 years old. He's a manual worker and he has a history of fall from height with a closed injury. And as we all see now, there is an intraarticular fracture of the tailor body. There is a fracture in the coronal plan, and this is another fracture in the transverse plan. And I think here we can see a shadow of a fragment planted in the body of the talus, and we can see here a loss of the uh, uh, distal end of the fibula. And as we know, in any articular fracture, we have to proceed with the CT, and this is the CT of the case with the coronal cuts, we can see here there's a significant displacement of this fracture line. And this is the planted part of the distal tibia, of the distal fibula in the tailor body. And I think it is the cause of this fracture line and this significant displacement. These are the other cuts of the tailor body in the coronal uh, 
plan and it is complete particular one. These are mid-sagittal cuts, as we can see. There is also complete articular fracture with significant displacement, and this is also the planted fragment in the distal tibular fracture. When we revise the classification of the tailor body fracture, fractures, as it's mentioned in uh, Collins, it's divided into three main groups. Share one group, where we can see a fracture, a vertical one, either in the uh, coronal or the sagittal plan, and shear two, which is also a linear fracture, but in the transverse plan, and the third type, which is crush fractures. The shear one type of fractures is subdivided into four types, type one non-displaced, type one E is non-displaced, type one P is minimally, minimally displaced, Type 1C, it is more displacement with extension into the tibial tailor and the tailor canchylian joints. Type 1D, there is dislocation of the fracture part from the tibial tailor and the tibial calcaneal joints. When we go for the AO classifications, this is the complete articular fracture, and it is also subdivided into two types. The single one was mild or no displacement, and this is the multi-fragmentary fracture. When we revise the treatment algorithm in colon, we can see here this, that type 1A and type 1B are treated conservatively with the low knee cast immobilization for six or eight weeks while type 1C and type 1D are treated with own reduction in terminal fixation. Type 2, where the fracture line is transverse, it's treated conservatively, while the crush type is treated with open reduction in terminal fixation. What about the recommendations of AO Foundation? When we talk about the body fracture, the tailor body fracture, the articular one, the recommendation is treatment with open reduction and internal fixation, either with screws or screw and blade fixation. So our decision making here for this case, as we can see, it is a tailor body fracture, multifragmentary. There's a transverse fracture, and this is another vertical fracture with planted fragment from the distal fibula into the body. With the fracture line is completely articular in all plants. So the decision was to proceed for open induction and terminal fixation in this atypical case. And we can say that it's atypical because this planted fragment of the distal fibula into the body and because the formal crush injuries are usually associated with other tailor fractures especially in the tailor neck, but we cannot see here the tailor neck fracture. So we can consider it a typical form of the tailor body fracture. We have chosen the anterolateral approach of the talus with lateral malleolar osteotomy because the main uh, uh, fragment of the fracture was lateral and also the uh, planted fragment of the distal fibula is located also lateral. This is an intraoperative uh, picture, as we can see here. This, as we can see here, this is a lateral malleolar osteotomy. This is the planted fragment of the lateral malleolus, and this is the tailor body of the fracture, and this is the uh, upper surface of the tailor body. And this is the transverse fracture of the tailor body, and this was the postoperative X-ray was fixation of all fragments of the tailor body and fixation of the distal fibular fractures with headless mini fragment screws. And this is a fixation of the uh, lateral malleolar osteotomy and the syndesmotic fixation. When we revise the literature for the tailor body fracture, I ha we have found this uh, interesting paper, it was published in 2018, and it's a level of evidence for 
and they have studied 1,527 patients. The open reduction internal fixation for the cases was done uh, in the period from 2007 till 2011, and the complications we have recorded for these cases for four years. And they have found that the arthrodesis rate at four years was 29 cases. It was about one point nine percent and the vascular necrosis was only was zero percent. This was in four years follow up. Our home message is the displaced intraarticular tailor body fracture requires anatomical reduction and rigid fixation and the short term follow up of the surgical treatment seems to be promising. I hope that you would like uh, our case and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Dr. Ahmad Rami for this very interesting talk. Finally, at the end of this session, I would like to thank all our eminent uh,